Elizabeth Rinskoff Parker. I'm the Dean at Pacific McGeorge, and I'm going to just say a very quick moment, a comment of welcome um, to this, I think you'll find, remarkable event. I'm going to be a little informal, however, and tell you that when Professor Paul Payton, whom you'll meet in a moment, suggested T.R. Reed as our speaker, I squealed and said, oh, terrific. Now this girlish burst is not something typical for the dean of a law school, but I remembered T.R. Reed from his dispatches on NPR from Japan, and I have been a fan of this rock star for many years. It happened, however, that Paul had a very appropriate idea for this series. My enthusiasm then what do we say, preceded why this is going to be so meaningful, and that is that this is about global health with an ethical component. And that is exactly what the Sierra Health Foundation, first in the person of its former director, uh, Len McCandless, and now carried on by Chet Hewitt, the current director, had in mind, I think, when they endowed this wonderful series. And so I would be remiss if I didn't begin by thanking them for their support. Nancy Lee and Abraham Daniels, board members for Sierra Health, are here as well, somewhere I know. And so I hope that they will carry these thanks back to the foundation. It has been a very meaningful, almost now, the better part of a decade. With that said, Paul, I know you have more thoughtful uh, remarks to give us as to why this is going to be such a wonderful and meaningful uh, conversation, and I must say too that Paul has been able to assemble just the audience uh, to engage with TRE this evening on the topic of global health. So, Paul? Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And thank you for all of your support. As many of you will know, that uh, Elizabeth is in her last year as our dean, and her support for the ethics across the professions initiative has been absolutely outstanding, key to my being here at Pacific McGeorge, and a wonderful opportunity for the legal community, for the McGeorge community, for University of the Pacific, and for Sacramento. And we've been very privileged to have your support, your encouragement, and your service to us and to the community. So thank you for that. Good evening, everyone, and welcome um, to this year's Ethics Across the Professions Initiative event, the Ethics of Healthcare and Global Perspective. As Elizabeth mentioned, I'm Professor Paul Payton, I'm director of the Ethics Across the Professions Initiative and professor of law here at Pacific McGeorge. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to the fourth of the major annual ethics events that we've hosted uh, in the initiative series and the sixth in the 10-year program generously supported by the Sierra Health Foundation. I'm especially pleased as well to welcome Nancy Lee and Abraham Daniels from the foundation this evening. Thank you so much for your continuing support of Pacific McGeorge and this important series and of the Sacramento community. I'm also very glad to welcome so many of you from different constituencies in our Sacramento and region community. I won't be able to recognize all of you, and I apologize for that, but we have confirmed attendees from both medicine and nursing at UC Davis, with which McGeorge enjoys a special relationship, as well as the UC Davis Law School, the UC Davis Center for Healthcare Policy and Research, from our university counterparts at Drexel, Sacramento State, the University of San Francisco, and Chico State, from healthcare providers at UC Davis, Sutter Health, Dignity, Mercy, Catholic Healthcare West, uh, Delta Dental, and Hills Physicians Group, thank you very much for coming, from various departments in the California State Government and from the legal community, as well as critically and importantly, those of you who are members of the Sacramento community. Thank you so much for joining us. We're very glad to have you here with us for this important conversation. I'm also very pleased to recognize Lily Cadeau, uh, president of the Pacific McGeorge Health Law Student Association and the law student members of that group. Thank you for your work and your commitment to issues in the field and for being with us tonight. Ethical standards are an integral part of all professional life, no matter the discipline. The American Bar Association's Committee on Professionalism reached back to quote Roscoe Pound, Dean of the Harvard Law School from 1916 to 1936 as noting that a quote profession is a, quote, group pursuing a learned art as a common calling in the spirit of public service. What's sometimes left out of that quotation is what Pound continued with, no less a public service because it may incidentally be a means of livelihood. As we've explored ethics in this series, last year focused on changes to the legal profession being brought by the twin challenges of globalization and technology, 
the year before that, judicial ethics, my first year here, ethics in government. The various pressures and challenges brought upon both the individual professionals practicing in a particular area, as well as on professions engaged as a whole, have been the source of important dialogue and debate. But the development of ethical standards and discussion about ethical issues too often occurs in splendid isolation, both within a profession itself and between the professions and the public. So in developing tonight's program last year, it was evident to me that issues in healthcare provided both an important opportunity to engage in a conversation, both within and across professions, and between professionals and the public, it, about issues fundamental to our organization as a society, and about the choices that we make individually and together about the ways in which public and private intersect. So concerns about the availability of a very public and private resource uh, continue to animate us. And like many of you, my own experiences with aging parents with increasing health care issues, as well as my own concerns, are colored by my own encounters with the system. But as a lawyer and as a law professor, I've also paid careful attention to the public policy debate taking place surrounding the introduction of the 2010 health care reforms here in the United States and to the subsequent constitutional challenges to that legislation. It's thus a particular privilege to be able to have two speakers this evening who are going to guide us through the important ethical and legal dimensions of the healthcare debates taking place. And while I'd like to take credit for being, uh, well, especially prescient, little could I have known last fall that the United States Supreme Court would be hearing argument about constitutional issues only a few weeks from now, and I certainly wasn't aware that the debut of T.R. Reid's latest documentary, U.S. Healthcare, The Good News, would be on the local Sacramento PBS affiliate last evening, for those of you who are night owls like me, it was on. I'm sorry that more of us didn't see it prior to this event, but hopefully we'll get another opportunity. This evening we're going to hear first from T.R. Reid, who many of you will know as one of the nation's best known correspondents through his coverage of global affairs for the Washington Post, his books, his documentary films, and his commentaries, as Elizabeth has mentioned, on NPR's Morning Edition. At the Washington Post, Reid covered Congress and four presidential campaigns, and he served as the new newspaper's bureau chief in Tokyo and in London. His New York Times bestseller, The Healing of America, A Global Quest for Better, Cheaper, and Fairer Healthcare, takes a tour of healthcare systems in major free market industrialized democracies in an effort to discern prescriptions for the problems identified here at home. In addition, and especially important for my own and this evening's purposes, Reed frames the concerns in that book as not only policy questions, but ethical ones. Is healthcare a human right? What are the moral dimensions of the decisions being made about the design of healthcare systems and what might be learned from international examples? PBS Frontline, as many of you are aware, produced two documentary films, A Second Opinion and Sick Around the World, following Reed as he reported it. His most recent documentary, U.S. Healthcare, The Good News, travels across the United States to report on communities that provide excellent healthcare at costs far below the national average. And the film notes his findings that many different models of healthcare delivery provide a roadmap to possible savings in America's medical bill with no de decreasing quality. We look forward to his comments and his perspectives uh, on these important issues. After TR's keynote address, I'm especially pleased that my colleague, Professor Leslie Jacobs, will provide an introduction and overview to the myriad issues that the US Supreme Court will confront as it hears the legal challenge to the 2010 healthcare overhaul law in a few weeks' time. The court has scheduled five and a half hours of argument, rather than the usual one, a testament to the importance of the case and to what the New York Times described as the, quote, epic clash between the federal government and the 26 states that together filed the challenge to the law. We're privileged to have an expert in-house on this. Professor Jacobs has been a professor at Pacific McGeorge since 1993 and serves as director of the Capital Center for Public Law and Policy, which is dedicated to studying issues of federalism and government structure and aiding government policymakers who must navigate their complexities. She's one of the law school's preeminent scholars, former law clerk to US Supreme Court Justice Lewis Powell, and has authored a substantial and important body of scholarship on constitutional law, free speech, government speech, and on issues of bioterrorism and national security. Her recent analysis of the constitutional challenges ran in Sacramento Bee last Sunday, and copies were available on the way in. So if you didn't get one and you'd like one, uh, please pick one up on the way out. And we'll be privileged again to have Leslie's overview and analysis following TR's address. Their presentations are going to be followed by a question and answer session, which I'll moderate. And you will have seen cards uh, have been and will be distributed and available to you on which we invite you to write your questions, uh, which my counterparts will collect 
uh, later on as we go through. I will collate those and pose them as, to the speakers uh, during that session and time permitting, we'll also have railway microphones. Thank you again so much for being with us this evening for an important dialogue and discussion. We look forward to your contributions and please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, T.R. Reed.